fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and we are doing another Throwback Thursday. This isn't a book I read a whole lot, but it is one that stuck with me throughout childhood and into adulthood. Like, I just really enjoyed the story and it always stuck with me. And that is Bonicula by James Howe. I ended up getting four books. Um, so this one has three books. It's a trilogy. And then I got this one to kind of go along with that. Um, and so I read Bonicula. I never read any of the others. But for some reason, Holiday Inn was in my head. So I don't know if I maybe saw, you know, it mentioned in the book or what the case may be. But I think, you know, just the name and probably like some of the artwork if I did see it stuck with me because reading it as an adult like there was no nothing familiar about it at all um and I don't have the best memory but Bonicula was familiar and my other childhood books were familiar and so I think if I had read it there would would have been something familiar about it and there wasn't at all so pretty sure I only read Bonicula but really still just just enjoyed these um so much reading them as an adult. I think they're really enjoyable. They're aimed for ages 8 to 12, but I don't know. I think you can enjoy them at any, way, any age. I may just be a kid at heart. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about these ones. It kind of works out that I did these ones next, you know, especially as we're getting into spooky season. You can see I was a fan of spooky mystery type books even as a child. I loved like Scooby-Doo um, and the different like Scooby-Doo shows and movies that they always did. Um, those were some of my favorites as well. So I just, I always really enjoyed like spooky oddball books I guess. So, um, but anyway, basically in this book we have Badicula, Holiday Inn, and Badicula Strikes Again. And so the first two are the first two books in the series. And then there's actually two more books. There's The Celery Stocks at Midnight and Nighty Nightmare. And then we have Return to Holiday Inn. And then we go back to Benicula Strikes Again. And then there's a final book called um, Benicula Meets Edgar Allan Crow. Um, and so I got, obviously these came in a trilogy. But even though I didn't read Holiday Inn, it, it was in my mind. And so I wanted to get those ones, and then obviously, you know, the Benicula Strikes Again and everything like that. Um, the other books, I had no connection to them or anything like that. So I just stuck with these ones, even though I never read Holiday Inn. Um, still was glad I got them because they were really enjoyable. Um, and so basically it follows, you have Harold, who is a dog, and Chester, who's a cat, and they have their family, and their family brings home Benicula, who... Um, is a, a vampire rabbit and sucks the vegetables of their juice and their color. Um, and Chester's on a mission to solve the mystery in the first one of Benicula and prove that Benicula is a vampire and that the, his family is in danger. And Harold is just, you know, kind of like, he's fine. You know, he's just a little bunny. Um, and the family, of course, has no clue what's going on. They're just confused why their vegetables keep turning white. Uh, and so it's really just a fun, enjoyable story. And, I had a lot of fun revisiting it. You know, there was a lot of things I didn't remember. Like, I had no memory of the family at all. You know, it's the mom, the dad, and then two boys. Um, and I had no memory of them at all. I remembered Harold. Uh, vaguely remembered Chester, but I really remembered Her Harold and the bunny. Like, those two just stuck with me all these years. Um, and so that's the premise of Benicula. And then in Holiday Inn they get left behind, their family goes on vacation, and so they get sent to Ka uh, Chateau Bow Wow, um, which Chester calls Holiday Inn because of these dachshunds that howl, and he thinks they're part werewolf. <laughs> Chester has a very good imagination. He actually enjoys reading. He's a cat who reads, so he reads all different mystery stories and things like that. So he has a very good uh, imagination and then Harold is actually the one that's writing these stories um they're based on you know his his real life events and things like that so, according to him of course the only thing I didn't like is Harold has a fondness for chocolate cake and reading it you know obviously as a kid like you know didn't register at all but as an adult especially as one who worked in a veterinary clinic I was just like no and I I just really couldn't get over it until 
in Benicula Strikes Again, he does address that. Um, and he says, you know, that he realizes, you know, that chocolate cake isn't good for all dogs, but he is a fictional dog and so it's okay. Um, so he does address that, but it's just to me, if a kid doesn't know and they're reading this book and like, oh, you know, Harold likes chocolate cake. Let me give my dog chocolate cake or let me give this random dog chocolate cake. And they can make that dog very, very sick. And so that's kind of why I was like, eh. Um, but other than that, I think even as an adult, these stories were so enjoyable. They're just a nice, simple, fun read. Um, and I do, you know, think it's, it's fun. If you have kids, definitely maybe one you would want to read with them. Um, but a lot of fun. And I just like the whole premise of the book, you know itself. So I didn't mark any pages in Bonicula, but I did mark some in Holiday Inn. And the first one is in chapter one. And it's on pages 16 and kind of ends in 17. And it's uh, Chester talking and he's kind of upset about the whole situation. And he ends up saying, you know, that there is no problem. You know, he's just being forced to spend his a week of his life um, in a place that is uh, run by dog chauvinists. <laughs> it has no no concern to his feline feelings. Um, I kind of paraphrased that a little bit, but it just, it was really funny and it's such a cat thing to do. And he does like, he takes like normal cat and dog things to do and, you know, makes them more like human um, in a sense, you know, because he, I mean, it's a cat that likes to read and dog that can write. And so it's just a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, there's this whole situation where dogs are disappearing and cats like, cats are disappearing. Um, and he doesn't know, you know, what's going on. And Chester actually ends up disappearing. And he has all these eyes on him. And he thinks that, you know, Chester, knowing too much costs Chester his life. But it's this whole, it's this whole thing. Um, and then I go into Vanicula Strikes Again. Um, and let's see here. There was a part that I really liked. Let me just find it real quick. Okay. <laughs> So, Vanicula strikes again, you know, he's back at it, and he's, you know, this little section here, this is on page 34, um, it's the chapter that is chapter 3, Do Not Litter, um, and basically he, he's like, um, let's see here, this is um, Chester talking, and he's like, should I leave those poor victimized victuals on the floor? Um, and then he's like, I decided, I vowed to myself to take matters into my own hands. And at this point we have Howie, who in Holiday Inn, the dachshunds give birth. And so that's where Howie comes in. They end up, the Monroes take one of the puppies. And so now we have Howie in the next two books. And he goes, pause. <laughs> and Chester goes, why, do you need to get a drink of water? And he's like, no, take matter into your own paws, not hands. Um, and so it's just like little things like that are throughout all the books. Um, and Howie's actually really enjoyable, especially into Return to Holiday Inn. Like he does all kinds of jokes and things like he thinks he's just so funny. Um, or he kind of misunderstand things and he takes things a little too literal, um, which is what I really enjoy about him as well. Um, it's just, it's just a lot of fun, and, yeah, there's just little things like that, like, all throughout the book, and, you know, obviously it's a very fictional tale, but it's super enjoyable, um, and I just, I don't know, I, it's one I would strongly recommend, even, I mean, it is made for a child, but it's just so entertaining, like, I, I got nothing else. Um, and then so, you know, Vanicula strikes again, obviously he's back at it, and they think it has to do with his mother, and so they go on this, like, big adventure, um, trying to find Vanicula's mother, and go to, like, the, the place where he, uh, was found, and everything like that, like, they're, they're quite active little, little critters, um, and then in return to Holiday Inn, they get, um, 
left at Chateau Bowel again, <laughs> obviously. And there's a whole slew of new characters, which is a lot of fun. Um, and this one, this one actually made me cry a little bit, especially having worked with animals. So basically, the whole premise of this one is they're trying to figure out what happened to a dog named Rosebud, and then they have Hamlet, who is there, and basically Hamlet's there because he thought his owner was on a trip, but in the end you find out that his owner is actually in an assisted living home, um, and he went to live with his owner's cousin, and she got a boyfriend, and the boyfriend didn't like him, and so she t sent him to Chateau Bow Wow and just kind of forgot about him. Um, and this was actually kind of more dark than I expected. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be so dark. And so, you know, they think Rosebud died, but she really did it. Um, but in the end, like, Hamlet's really old and he has his limp. And I'm pretty sure they were gonna put him down. But, like, they take him out of, you know, the bungalows is what they call the kennels. Um, and take him inside. Um... And he's basically, it's, it's his time up. Like, he has nowhere else to go. He's he's old. Uh, and I don't know if they really would have, but that's what the, all the animals think. Like, he's going to be put down. So they go on this big adventure, and there's these two cats, um, Misdemeanor and Felony. And so they know the city because they, you know, they're, they're, they do their life of crime and such. Um, and so they end up finding, you know, first they go to the first address on his file, and that's the cousin's house, and then they see that they got a puppy, and the boyfriend's completely okay with the puppy, um, which is not okay, like, you don't get, and Hamlet's so sweet, he's like, you know, I understand, like, why would they want an old dog like me, you know, obviously, it's not the puppy's fault, because misdemeanor and felony are like, let's go steal toys and slash chairs, it's like, it's not the family's fault, it's not, you know, the cousin Flo's fault, or anything like that, and he's just such a, a sweet dog, <laughs> I'm getting all emotionally attached to these animals. But anyway, so they go on an adventure and they find the assisted living home and he finds his old owner. Um, and his old owner is a ventriloquist and they do like a whole little show and then the people that run Chateau Bow Wow show up to take the animals away. Um, and in the end, like, they convince the people and it has a no pet policy and they convince him to allow to to keep Hamlet, which is just... I mean, I cried a little bit at that because, I mean, he thought his, his time was up and, you know, he was going to go, I don't remember what they call it, you know, into the sky and, and things like that. But it was just, it was really, really sweet. Um, and, yeah, it's funny because the owner's actually a ventriloquist, so Rosebud, um, a little bit of a spoiler, but it's a, it's a children's book, so... Um, but Rosebud is actually alive, and it was Hamlet pretending to be the ghost of her, um, because her collar was buried in the yard, and so, yeah, it's just, it's a really cute book, and all of them were really enjoyable, but I think I enjoyed Return to Holiday in the best, for sure. Um, so I would strongly, you know, recommend if you can get a copy, especially if you have children, like, it's one read with them, because it's definitely enjoyable enough that I think, you know, you would be entertained, too. Um, so I do recommend that, that you, you get these, um, and like, so there, there are more of them, so I'm really glad I reread these ones. These are ones I'm actually going to be rereading in the future, too, if I just want, like, a fun, you know, enjoyable read. There are ones I can see myself picking up and, and reading over and over again, um, so I'm really glad I ended up getting a copy, even though they weren't ones I read a whole lot as in my childhood, definitely stuck with me all these years, and I'm so glad I revisited them. Um, if you've read Benicula, let me know your thoughts in the comment below, uh, because it's just, it's just so fun. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you here. Don't forget, our October book of the month is The Ring by Danielle Still. Those videos are up every Monday, and then we do our weekly reads on Wednesdays, and we do a series Saturday. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye!